At age seven, Ron Rabinovitz came face to face with his idol, Jackie Robinson. And from that moment on, the two shared an intimate, almost incredible friendship through a series of letters, visits, and phone calls until Jackie's untimely death in 1972. His relationship with the legendary baseball player and civil rights pioneer was truly one of a kind. Ron joins us now to tell his story. I will tell you that I've interviewed Robinson twice in my career. Did you? Uh, once in 1960 when he was campaigning for Nixon. Yes. And then late six, in the late 1960s. And I was also at his first game, sitting huh. in the bleachers as a kid of 14 years old and April of 1947, yeah. I'll never forget it. Yeah. How did you meet Jackie Robinson? Well, my dad, I grew up in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and my father uh, told me a lot about Jackie, and he said to me, how would you like to meet him someday? And I said, boy, would I love that. Well, unbeknownst to me, he wrote Jackie a letter and told him how much I admired him, and he didn't want to tell me about how it. How old were you, seven? Seven years yeah. old. Didn't want to tell me about it in case Jackie didn't respond. So I get this let I get this autographed picture and a letter from Jackie. I have it here. And it says uh, and the letter said, um, I, I, you know, I'd love to meet you sometime when uh, we would come to Milwaukee. You know, at that time the Atlanta Braves were the Milwaukee Braves. So we went to a Dodger Brave game, and that was the first baseball game I was ever at that I couldn't wait for it to end, because I knew what was going to happen next. And we went down to the locker room and waited for him to come out. And I ran up to him with about 50 other kids. And I said, Jackie, I'm Ronnie Rabinovich. Do you remember me? He said, sure, I do. My dad's standing over my shoulder. He said, sure, Jackie, with the thousands of letters you get, how would you remember? He said, no, I remember your dad wrote me on lawyer stationery. My father was an attorney. From that time on, we became the very dearest of and friends. here's a bunch of letters, pictures of you and him, yeah. personal letters from Jackie Robinson, Dear Ronnie. Yeah. How long did that friendship go on? It lasted uh, almost 20 years, up until the time he passed away. Wow. This was a picture. This is my 10th birthday in Milwaukee, and he came to my birthday party and was singing Happy Birthday to me. Uh, it was unbelievable. You lived in a city where there weren't any blacks, That's right? Correct. That's correct. And there correct. was some prejudice in that city, Very was much there so. not? Very much How so. did that, did, did you have any problems with that? Well, yeah, we did occasionally. There was uh, some incidences. Jackie was supposed to stay at our home one, one time, and, and uh, uh, this was after he retired from baseball. And it turned out that he uh, couldn't, but uh, someone had spray painted a sign on my father's law office. And, Rabinovitz is bringing with the N-word uh, to Sheboygan. Terrible. Terrible. Just terrible. Yeah. He My, was an amazing guy, wasn't he? Phenomenal. He, phenomenal. Now, you, your father was a Democrat, right? Your father was, was a, a Kennedy guy. He, your he father knew a, Kennedy, that's right? That's right. Kennedy stayed at our house, Jack Kennedy and Bobby. They both stayed at our home. You, you've, wow. And I Jack, was a young kid, I'm telling you. Jack, it's amazing. told me he supported Nixon. He did. Because he didn't. He didn't buy Kennedy, and he thought Nixon right. was pragmatist, and they needed a pragmatist. Exactly. And I could understand in a way because, you know, at that time, the Democrats were the Dixiecrats, you know. Yeah. And uh, a lot of them with racial prejudice and what, whatever. You know, I know Rachel very well. Did you get to know oh, his wife? Oh, very much so, yeah. She's a great lady. She's a wonderful lady. I met her in 19, uh, oh, it was 1987, 97. She was in, Mo in Minneapolis, and it was the 50th anniversary and I was at a press conference where she was being presented a check from the twins. And I said, I went up to her afterwards. I said, uh, Rachel, I'm Ronnie Rabinovitz. And just like that, she said, oh, my God. And she hugged and kissed me. She said, Jack loved you so much. These letters you have, personal letters written over the years in yeah. his handwriting, have you given them to the Baseball Hall of Fame? I've been there twice to the Hall of Fame. And, of course, they would love them. I, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them yet. You still have the originals, right? I still right? have the originals, yeah. yeah. Either How way. do you explain to yourself this little Jewish-American kid <laughs> in Wisconsin yeah. gets friendly with the literally what Martin Luther King told me is a pioneer of the civil rights right. movement he called right. you? How do you explain that? You know what? I don't know, Larry. I really Your father was know. a Kennedy Democrat. I'd, Robinson opposed They him. were arguing. They'd get together and they'd argue politics all the time. Matter of fact, my dad was the one that taught, brought Jack Kennedy, uh, Jackie to bring to talk to Jack Kennedy, and try to convince him to support him. And didn't he work. Didn't have anything to do with it. No. Yeah, Jack. Yeah. Well, Jackie Robinson 
Now, he was not the man of those first two years. He no. was a tough competitor. Tough, tough competitor. You had so many memories with him. Did, did you spend time with him? Did a you? lot of time. A lot of time. Like what? You know. did you? Well, we would, you know, during the season, you know, when he was still playing, and I actually saw him at the end of his career, really. I mean, you know, the last few years. 55, but, 56. Yeah, 54, 55, right. 56, you know. And, uh, but we would spend time together, and he'd write to me. I'd write to him. Jackie Robinson, Stanford, Connecticut. No address, no zip code. He'd write Ronnie Rabinovitz, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. No address, no zip code. And we'd get together. I mean, he sent me a telegram when I graduated from high school. Uh, it was just amazing. And I, I loved him, and he loved me. Uh, it was just a fascinating friendship. Did you go to his funeral? I did not. I was, I just, I was about 23, It was an amazing funeral 24. in New York. Yes, I understand it was. I was with him about six months before he passed away. He was, I was blind, I right? was in New York. He was yeah. blind in one eye. He was going blind in the other eye. Yeah. And he was in pretty rough shape. And he was so happy to see me, and he wanted to hear all about my family, and I, of course, about his. And afterwards, I got him settled in a cab, and I leaned in, and I kissed him on the cheek and told him how much I loved him. And I remember it as it was yesterday. I stood at that corner as that cab disappeared. And I had tears running down my cheeks because I knew this would be the last time I'd see him. Jackie is, he was beyond baseball, right? He was beyond baseball. Did you see the movie 42? I did many times. It was times. a terrific film. Terrific, terrific. Very yeah. true to life. Eh? Very it, true to life. And, you know, Rachel, she put her stamp of approval on yeah. it. So it was, it was terrific. Have you kept in touch with Rachel? I have. I just got a beautiful note from her a couple of weeks ago. And... She thanked me for carrying on his legacy as I have. I've been talking to kids and, and companies around this country for 25 years now uh, about Jackie. And uh, he, he meant so much to me. And uh, I, I just loved that man so much. Of course, his number will never be worn again. Uh, I know. Uh, Mariano has retired, so one. 42 yeah. is retired. Yeah. So do you go to games? I do. You I see go to, 42 on every scoreboard in baseball? It. I love it. And I go on Jackie Robinson Day. I've been on the field. Uh, I've been on the field here, actually, at Dodger Stadium. Well, I'm yeah, a Rachel's, huge Dodger been, fan. Rachel's been here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's going to be a play. I see the incredible yes. season of Ronnie Rabinovitz. Isn't that Tell something? me about that. Well, I was contacted by the History Theater in St. Paul. And they uh, commissioned uh, Eric Simonson, who wrote Lombardi, which was on Broadway. And terrific. Terrific. Play. Yeah, he's a great guy. He lives out here. And uh, so he wrote this play, and it's uh, the world premiere is going to open February 1st in Minneapolis, in St. Paul, at the, uh, from February 1st to the 23rd. And That's uh, the story of you? It's about me. There'll be a fellow playing Jack Kennedy, Jackie. There'll be a kid playing me at 12 years old, my mother and my father. Matter of fact, the fellow that's playing Jack Kennedy is a fellow by the name of James Denton, who uh, was with uh, on Desperate Housewives. <laughs> he absolutely lives. He lives uh, in Minneapolis. Give me something that maybe people don't know about Jackie Robinson. He loved children. He loved kids. Uh, he had a passion for kids. One time we were coming out. He was coming out of the locker room in Milwaukee. The guys were getting on the bus to go back to the hotel. The series wasn't done yet. So the guys are getting on the bus, and he's talking to me, and he's... he's uh, signing They're a little kid, on. right? Yeah, I'm so, and he's signing kids' autographs. Here comes a priest with a whole parish full of kids, and they all want autographs. So he's signing and signing. Pretty soon, the guys on the bus are opening the windows. Come on, Jackie, you're holding us up. You know what he did? He went to the bus driver. He said, you know, take, take the guys back to the hotel. I'll take a cab. And he stood there, and he signed every kid's autograph. I mean, that's the type of guy he was. He was just a real human being. You know, the, the two years that he started, he had to hold himself back. Yes, he did. Because he was a vicious yes, competitor. He was. Leo DeRocha told me yeah. that he was the toughest bench jockey really? he'd ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. He had used a lot of vicious language. Yes. Didn't yeah. care what he said. He would no. slide into his mother yeah. to win a game, yeah. right? What do you think most people don't know about him? Well, I think that they, what they don't realize is how important he was to this country. You know, they say... Good point. Babe Ruth changed baseball. Jackie Robinson changed America. And he did it alone. I mean, and, and I think about Rachel, too, because she was in those stands. Just imagine her sitting there listening to all these catcalls, watching her, her husband get thrown at 
I mean, in those days, as you know, they didn't have helmets. They, they, they just wore a cap, a baseball cap. And my God, they were throwing just as fast then as they do now. And spiking him, black hats on the field, death threats. He went through so much. Yeah, Amazing. and he had tragedy in his life. His son passed away. Oh, right? I know. And there's a lot of the letters here. Jackie Jr. was about a year or two younger than I was. Yeah. And so I would play Little League ball. He was playing Little League ball. I was going to camp. He was going to camp. So we had a lot of similarities. But amazing, he would write you, this is incredible, like long. I mean, it's not Dear hand, Ronnie, best of luck. Handwritten letters. Yeah. This was a tie relation. What did he see in you, Ronnie? What did I you... don't know what it was. I mean, this it is incredible just, stuff. You know, it, it's almost like it was, he handed me a baton, a friendship and love, and I took that baton and I, I've carried it on to others. I remember I, I was called by a school in Minneapolis one day to come and speak. I said, I'd love to. This was like 25, 26 years ago. So I said, all right, kids, how many ever heard of Jackie Robinson? This little boy stood up and said, no, who is she? And I said, well, wait a minute here. And then I realized, how would they know? So today I go around. I, I'm, next week I'm going to be in Washington, D.C., speaking at George Washington University. And uh, I just love carrying the message. Um, well, you ought to be very, you ought to be very proud. What, what did you, what did you do for a living? I still sell corrugated boxes and packaging for a company in Minneapolis. Before that, I used to be in, in sales and in the garment business. I was a children's sales rep, manufacturer's rep. Here's one of the things Jackie wrote. I have a very fine job and extremely happy in it. I hope you are happy in school and you are watching us as I must, I, I hope you're watching your weight. Right. You will find yourself much happiness with less weight. Right. I'll show you one letter that it's just, um, uh, I'll take it, give well, you one, an, one of my treasured moments is having interviewed Robinson twice, having watching him play so much. Uh, it was incredible what he meant. And I go back to my interview with Martin Luther King when I introduced Martin Luther King and I said, the founder of the civil rights movement, he says, I'm going to correct you. The founder of the civil rights movement was Jackie Robinson. Right, exactly. I mean, when you think about it, Larry, it was, it was 18 years before the civil rights movement. Martin Luther King was a teenager. Rosa Parks wasn't heard of yet. I mean, it was amazing. It was just... It changed America. It You're changed right. America. What were you going to talk about? Okay. Uh, one of the letters, a little excerpt here, he says, uh, I'm very happy to know everything went well at your bar mitzvah. <laughs> he said, and I invited him to my bar mitzvah. <laughs> And he says, Ronnie, one of the things that pleases me most is our friendship continues, even though I'm no longer connected with baseball. It's friends like you that make me feel that everything that happened was worthwhile. I hope we do get a chance to see each other soon. It seems when people are as far apart as we are, they have a tendency to forget. I hope we don't. My regards to the family. I hope everything continues to go well. Always, Jackie. Amazing. And that all happened out of... You're going to get your father writing him a note, right? And he answers back to a seven-year-old. Yeah, isn't it amazing? I mean, it was just amazing. And then after he retired from baseball, well, when he retired, I cried. I was, I, you know, I thought, my God, I'll never see him again. They Why tried to trade want... him to the Giants. Yeah, wasn't that terrible? Yeah, it he was wouldn't terrible. go. Our, yeah. our hated Giants. You well, know? He didn't like O'Malley very much. No, I know he didn't. I know he didn't. He loved Branch Rickey. He loved yeah. Chuck Dressen. You know, uh, he wasn't too crazy about Walter Alston either, I don't think. No. But uh, so when he got, uh, when he retired, well, a year before he, re he retired, he was, you know, he used to play second base or third base. This particular day he was playing left field. And a line drive went by him and missed him and rolled all the way to the fence. So we had dinner that night, and I said, Jackie, there was a tough play. He says, tough heck, he says, Ambrose would have had it. Sandy huh. Ambrose was a rookie young. So he says, Ronnie, I'm going to tell you a secret that no one else knows except my own family. He says, next year will probably be my last year in baseball. And after that year, he, re he retired, and I, excuse me, and I, I cried. I thought, my God, I'll, and I wrote to him about it. And he wrote, and he said that his own son, Jackie Jr., was crying. And he assured both of us that everything would be okay. And in fact, it was, because he did come back to Wisconsin many times. He was very active with an organization called the Na National Conference of Christians and Jews. Yep. He came with sports banquets, different things, and he would let us know, and we'd spend the weekend or the afternoon or the evening with him. When you last saw him, yes, you were a, a grown man. I was then. a grown man, right. And you were on the street? Uh, 
Where I, was it? It was in New York. It was actually, we had lunch at Mama Leone's. <laughs> and uh, I had to take him by the arm and help him into the Couldn't see very restaurant. Well. And I felt so sad because I remembered him dancing up and down those bases. Yeah, Puig reminds me of him a yes, little bit. Yes, yeah. Really. And uh, I felt so sad about that. But he was so happy to see me. It was just wonderful. And every time I came to New York on business, first thing I would do would call, was call him. What a story. I can't wait to see this play, <coughs> The Incredible Season of Ronnie Rabinovitz. You're an incredible guy, Ron. Thank you. You're a very fortunate man. It's an Thanks, honor Larry. talking to you. It's a pleasure and talking I, to you. I, with those letters, they're going to go somewhere, right? Yeah. When you, the Hall of Fame, somewhere. Yeah, they have to go somewhere. Come on. That's right. Thanks yeah. to my guest, Jackie Robinson's pen pal and friend. What a story. Ron Rabinovitz, thank you for sharing that story. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. Wow. See you next time. Thank you.